Good morning, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. So I am back out here at the park. This is probably my fourth or fifth trip out here. I'm not sure which. Um, I've still got a few more logs. Got a couple big boys left to get to here. Two back there. And then one really large one right here that I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get or not. We'll have to look at that. I'm gonna get these first. And then I got a couple more small ones I'm gonna get. But I brought you here with me today because I want to uh, show you some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and the difference between the, the first lift versus these, which I hope go much better. So one big one is I've got some tires here that I've been putting under the arch so when the arch falls, it uh, isn't hitting so violently. Um, also, you know, some people mentioned transmission in the uh, previous video. My vehicle is actually in neutral when I'm lifting these. That's the reason it's going to rock so much. Um, I'm doing this so I don't mess up the uh, the parking pin. I've got some chalks in my uh, box here, but I also got pieces of wood and I just put them around the tires and keep it in neutral. So um, yeah, I'm going to put you on the tripod, get all my stuff out and get it ready and see if we can't lift up these two logs here. I'm going to try to load these two on this trip and then maybe a little one or two. Um, I'll measure this one. I think this is bigger than the uh, biggest one we've got so far, but we'll check and see. Well, I've only shot 150 some videos and I still managed to forget to hit record. And I'm very frustrated because that went about as good as possible. It was 827 when I started hooking up the winch, hooking up everything. And it was 843 when this log was on. No bangs, no clangs, just simple pulls and no record button. So, um, the second log is typically harder because not only are you trying to pull it on the trailer, but you're also trying to get it off to the side in position. But hopefully I can get this one <laughs> on film and uh, we can show you how it goes. Some things I said in, during that video that you didn't get to hear are uh, a good snatch block. Make sure you have a good snatch block. I started off with an Amazon snatch, snatch block. I shouldn't say Amazon. It's made by, I'll put the name of the company in here. It blew apart on me. It was rated at 22,000 pounds. I've only got a 9,000 pound winch and it blew apart on me, went right by me. Um, so I've got a worn winch now that is rated at 18 tons and it's just a quality, quality piece of equipment, you can tell. Um, also, leave some slack in the chain. Don't try to get it so high. You know, the higher you get it, the further the log moves forward, but it's just not worth it. All right, I'm gonna back up and let's see if we can get this second one on.
moved in far enough. Almost. Yeah, it'll close. All right. All right, so that one is 37 inches and 13 feet long. So, um, you know, that did pretty good. Even with having to get it off to the side, didn't take long. It is now 902. Uh, they're getting ready to take down another tree. So it looks like I'll have even one more still yet. So more than I thought I would. Well, I'm gonna get this load back and then come back again. Um, I'll try to get some aerial shots next time. I'm beginning to think the storm that shook me wasn't the ending. That maybe saving she's hiding inside the breaking. So it is uh, Tuesday evening. I shot that video that you just saw on Saturday. That was uh, Saturday morning. And I ended up after what you saw, I ended up making another uh, three trips after that for a total of four trips that day and got a lot of logs. But I turned the cameras off. I needed to stop videoing. I was, um, I got a little frustrated after what happened there. You know, I had the drone up in the air, the trying to get all those logs unloaded before the drone battery died so I could show the video. Um, and up to that point, every single load I did, and after that, every single load I did, I dumped the trailer, they slid down, I put blocks under them, pulled up, put blocks under them, and pulled up, and they were out. Easy as could be. With well, that particular load, the logs were very tight side to side. There was no room to give. And um, one of the logs had a lot of branches that had been cut off because it was from an upper portion of the tree. And you know, when the guys are cutting down the tree, they're not worried about how long they leave those nubs because they're just trying to get the tree down. Well, and it came down, one of the little branches got stuck on the arch. And what I was going to do and what I should have done is grab my chainsaw and cut that branch off. Well, as you saw from the last video, my chainsaw hasn't been cutting that well. And uh, I actually am working on it today. I'm gonna try to take the parts from this cheap Chinese knockoff and put them in my uh, actual Husqvarna handle and see if I can make it work until the Husqvarna handle comes in. But anyway, I didn't grab it because in my mind, I needed to hurry. It was extremely windy, so I was probably only gonna get about 10 minutes out of my drone battery. Um, I kept getting the warnings of the high winds and it's beeping on me over and over again. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I'll just give it a good jerk and they'll pop out. The log will twist and that branch will get by. Well, the log didn't twist, the arch twisted. And it, it was a good moment for my son because uh, when we were, when I finally got the chainsaw out, cut it off, got the logs off, and as soon as I cut it off, they just slid out, um, which made me that much more annoyed with myself. But when we got in the truck, I asked my son, I said, uh, do you know why those logs bent the arch? Or I said, do you know why the arch got bent? And he said, yeah, it was that stupid log. And I said, no, that was your stupid daddy. <laughs> and I explained to him, you know, son, that was me not being patient. That was me trying to get in a rush. And in, when that problem occurred, instead of using my brain, trying to just muscle through it. 
And I think it's a very important thing for our youth to learn, and it was a good opportunity for him. I know in recent past, he's blamed things on his sisters when it was really his fault. You know, well, she made me fall, or she made me do this. Um, and so I, I thought it was good for him, but it's also uh, important for me to remember that, um, you know, I have got to take responsibility and use my brain. So now I have a bent arch. The good thing is I have since lifted more 37 inch logs, actually one that's bigger than the first one that you all saw, the biggest one I lifted with it with no issues other than that it's crooked and it rubs the side of the trailer. So the arch itself is plenty strong enough to lift anything I would ever need to lift. I am super happy with that. I've just got to uh, figure out if I can salvage it or if I'm gonna have to completely rebuild it. And I really hope I don't have to completely rebuild it. You know, if I do, then then that's just the way it is. So, but I wanted to point that out. I, the thing I'm trying to do the most with my channel, I, so many YouTubers I've watched over the years, they give off this vibe that they are just amazing. And maybe they are, maybe they don't make mistakes. You know, I feel like in my life, I do a lot of amazing things. I feel like I've accomplished a lot of amazing things. But I also feel like I screw up daily. I, I don't know everything. I try to learn as much as I can. I try to be as versatile as I can. But the fact is, I screw up all the time. And what I don't want is people watching my channel and they get this, um, they start measuring themselves up against something that's unobtainable. Because I can edit these however I want. I can edit out every mistake I make. I can make it look like I am the smartest, best at everything person but then that just gives people something to measure themselves up against that's not real, it doesn't exist. So that's something I try hard not to do. All right guys, I am excited. I just took this out and did a few test cuts with it. I've got a blade lock that works the way it's supposed to now. I took some of the internals out of this and put it into my original handle and it is working great. Now granted, this is still a 25 year old saw that uh, you know is a little bit long in the tooth and only 55 cc's, but night and day different. It's getting its full revs. I can buck into a saw and not just immediately kill it. It's just so much better right now. I'm very happy with it. So um, I still, no doubt in the future, I need to get a new saw, but now I've got a really good backup. And comparing these two, I'm gonna see if I can show you on camera here. I was able to see they're completely manufactured different. If you see the handle on the knockoff, it's 90 degrees to uh, the saw. And so it hits this the grab bar here, whereas the Husqvarna is off at an angle. And that's what was already causing this handle to break was just by hitting that. So, but yeah, we got a new spring in there, got a new uh, um, pivot point, and it seems to be working good. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd let you know that I breathed some new life into this saw. So it should last me for many more years to come, hopefully. Well, if you like these kind of videos, hit that thumbs up button. If you don't like these kind of videos, hit the thumbs down button. Either way, leave me a comment telling me why. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to get notified every time I put out a new video, hit that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.